Hello beautiful people and welcome to today's lens review. So Sigma just very recently announced two additional lenses to their phenomenal art series. Now that has been inspiring me to make this video on the Sigma 35mm 1.4 which happens to be their very first lens in this art series. It was first announced in September 2012 in Germany and let's see how this lens is holding up after all these years. The Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens was introduced with a price tag of 900 US dollars and after about 6 years that price tag remains more or less the same. Now if you're in the market for a very fast high quality 35mm lens, the value of the Sigma 35mm 1.4 is quite competitive and tempting when comparing to Nikon's, Sony's and Canon's versions of a 35mm 1.4. The 35mm 1.4 art lens was designed for full frame and crop sensor and is available for Pentax, Nikon, Canon, Sony and Sigma mounts. The package contents also includes a nicely padded carrying case which is good if you do not use a camera backpack, a lens hood, front and back caps and a total of 4 years in extended warranty from date of purchase for manufacturing and workmanship defects. Key features include a hypersonic motor for very quiet autofocus with full manual override. A very fast aperture of f1.4 as the name of the lens already suggests and for those who like to use filters this lens has a common 67mm filter thread which will allow you to find a lot of inexpensive filters out there. It's also worth noting that this lens made out of 13 elements and 11 groups weighs about 660 grams and has a solid build quality with its metal barrel. At 35mm on full frame you will experience a field of view of about 63 degrees and on crop sensor about 44 degrees. Now all of this information is only leading us to a final golden question which is how does this lens actually perform and what is the image quality that can be produced with such a lens. So before us here in Adobe Lightroom I have 22 raw files which are representing all the different aperture settings that this lens is capable of. So let's start with aperture f1.4, the widest open setting and let's go through all the pictures to examine the vignetting. As you may be able to tell at 1.4 wide open there is a quite significant vignetting effect that's occurring. As we go under the develop module and enable profile corrections you'll be able to really see what's going on there. And as I disable this let's look at the histogram together. As I enable profile corrections and correct and vignetting there is a significant jump in overall exposure. Just to give you guys an idea. Let's move up to aperture 1.6. Same thing, there is a significant amount of vignetting and as we move to f1.8 there is still a somewhat significant vignetting that's occurring but as we move closer to 2.5 now we're at f2 right here you can see where we're at. There's still a little bit of vignetting but once again the closer we move to f2.5 it's really being taken care of. So as we can see now at f2.8 the vignetting is really starting to just disappear not really too much of an issue. But to begin with, I wouldn't uh, consider this vignetting to be an issue because as you can see, profile corrections is easily able to take care of matters. Now, this is not a controlled environment and the overall exposure of all my pictures may differ because the clouds were moving, the sunlight was uh, changing. So, but as you can see, as we're moving closer to f16, there is no more vignetting really that's occurring. So up until f2.5, 2.8, that's where we experience vignetting and anything wider than f2 at f1.8, 1.6 and 1.4, once again, a somewhat significant amount of vignetting, but certainly not a deal breaker for me personally, as you can see how easily this can be corrected. So at this point we can go ahead and examine the chromatic aberration. The groups and elements of this lens promise well handled chromatic aberration. So let's go ahead and zoom right into the center and start examining the chromatic aberration levels. Now once again this is starting at aperture at f1.4 wide open. As you can see right here in the center there's a little bit of red-ish color fringing occurring. Let's go through the different aperture settings at f1.6 not too much of a difference same thing at f1.8 but i do get the sense that as we close down the aperture the chromatic aberration is certainly improving in the center now let's move closer to let's say aperture f5 this is aperture f4 right here and as you can see it already at aperture f4 it looks so much better 
And as we go through our aperture settings here, whoops, we got aperture f5 right here. Pretty, pretty well handled actually here in the center. As I move down here a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit of uh, color fringing occurring there. Now, as we move closer to F16, we got F11 right here. The chromatic aberration in the center, pretty well handled actually. And F16, pretty, pretty good. Now, let's pick one of the corners and examine the chromatic aberration in the corners. Let's pick, for example, this corner right here where there is actually quite a lot uh, happening here. At f16 it's actually looking pretty good. Let's jump back to wide open f1.4. As I go in this corner right here we can certainly notice that there is some uh, color fringing occurring, some green color fringing here. Not too bad though. Let's jump to let's say f3.2. As we're closing down the aperture, it definitely improves throughout the overall frame. Let's jump to, let's say, the bottom right corner here at f3.2 once again. Still very, very little noticeable, but it's really not too much of a big deal here. If we, let's say, click remove chromatic aberration, we can see that this is being corrected. Now let's check out some of these red lines, for example, right here. Remove chromatic aberration. It's actually handled pretty well and as you can see Lightroom is able to just really bam take care of that so chromatic aberration I would say not perfect not on a Zeiss level but at the same time it's still pretty pretty well handled no complaints here from my end so let's go ahead and examine the sharpening, which at this point you should have already kind of gotten the idea that this lens is pretty, pretty magnificent. When it comes to image sharpness, the Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens shines in a golden way, beating the competition in its category. Even when shooting wide open at f1.4, this lens is very, very sharp. So I would never hesitate to using this lens that wide open. Now there is a little bit of softening that occurs around the corners, but this is really not giving me a lot to complain about. This is simply a significant lens. Now the sharpest aperture settings are probably from right around f3.2 through f11. This is where the lens will be the sharpest in this particular range. Now even as you go above f11, the lens is very, very sharp as it just softens out a little bit. But once again, very, very sharp, even wide open at f1.4. So let's go ahead and check out some images that I took over the years with this lens and then we can go ahead and conclude and summarize what this lens is all about. So what is our conclusion for today? The only downside that I see is that this lens does not come with weather sealing. If that is something you personally find important, you may take that into consideration. But other than that, I think this lens is a no-brainer. If you're in the market for a very fast 35mm prime lens, this is possibly your best choice. You get the best value, saving hundreds of dollars, and you also get superior image quality to any of the competitor lenses in that particular class category. So once again, superior image quality, great value, great build quality, fast and quiet and accurate autofocus. So this is definitely a must buy. And that pretty much sums up today's lens review. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. And that sums up this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. In your eyes, I saw diamonds and skies. And I did all for you, cause you wanted me to.